So welcome back to this uh, series on low-level programming, and then we will continue our journey on programming with the x86 assembler. And today I'm going to teach you about the registers and some new instructions, calling conventions, and how to write loops. So let's write a simple printing program to begin with. We have to have a global main, so we're at global main, and, and we can write the main label, which will be executed and called by the operating system. We also want to have some string to print. We can call that just string. Uh, we can call it whatever. It's a label that will point to the string. And then we declare that we'll have a number of bytes uh, we say that say that we want to print a number, but we don't give the number right now. We, we add 10 and then zero, where 10 means a new line and zero means that we are going to have a, a null terminated string. In the main program, we, we need to do the printing and we're going to use printf this time. So let's call printf. But printf uh, needs to be called, and it's an external function that is available in libc that we will link in. So we, we need to make it external. Extern printf. We also need to give some arguments. We need to say to printf that please print this string here. And then we have to give this value, uh, the address to this, this string here into a register. And, and that is into a register that is register RDI. So we write move RDI string, which means that we take the address of string and put it into the register RDI. So what is a register RDI? There are several different registers. And I have put together a reference sheet that you can uh, download. It's available in the description here of the video, where I show you the most common registers which the operands are, uh, a few of the most important instructions. I mean, there are over 800 instructions. So this is just a very small subset, but enough to write actually interesting assembly programs. The calling conventions, some directives, how to reserve data. And finally, there is also available Hello World program that you can try out. Okay, so we are now going to use a register that's called RDI. And that register is available there. So you can see here that we have 16, 0 to 15 uh, different registers, which have special names for historical reasons. Each register here is 64 bits here. But then you see here that we have something start with E and they uh, have 32 bits. It's actually the same register. So RAX and EIAX it's the same register. It's just that these 32 bits points to the least significant 32 bits of these 64 bits. The same here, AX is the least significant 16 bits out of these 32 bits and out of these 64 bits. And the same thing with this AL. And this is for backward compatibility reasons. And some of them have some special meaning. So you can see this here in the notes. So let's say, see then that RDI, uh, uh, we put, give that a value, and uh, that's the string. Then we call printf, and it turns out that you also have to clear the value of RAX. And you can do the clearing of uh, RDX by either moving RAX to zero. This is actually the same thing as writing XOR RAX, RAX, because then we are doing exclusive, exclusive OR of all the values. So this is the same thing. Where, where, where did you find this register, this uh, instruction? Well, it's available here in the instruction subset here. You can see move, for example, we got here, moving one operand to another, or actually moving the value in this operand into this operand. And this operand should then be a register or a memory uh, location. And then we have XOR here, or a bitwise exclusive OR that is defined like this. And the semantics is described to the right and it's using a C kind of semantics. We can also see here that the opcodes here, uh, the, the meaning of these opcodes is defined here. So, or the meaning of, the meaning of these operands are available he, up here. You see here that the, we have the, the operand can be a register like RAX, EDX, et cetera. 
it can be an operand, immediate operand, and written in decimal form or hexadecimal form, or in, actually in binary form as well. And it can be a memory operand, and then we use these brackets. And that means that you will read from or write to a memory position where the, the, the register or the number inside here is a, is a address. So it points to a specific address in memory. Okay, let's continue. This is it. And then we also want to return. And if we're returning from uh, the function here, we will return and exit the program. And then it turns out that uh, we have to give the error code and that is also in RAX. So let's give it zero as the return code. And to run the program as before, if you watch the Hello World tutorial, we write an ASP and 1264. And then we have the program, which is prog.asp. We can do this like this. So we execute the program, the next command directly, if it's successful. So this, and then we link it with GCC, no pi, and uh, hello, no, prog.o. And we can, of course, put this in a make file if we want to make it faster. And then we do like this, a dot out, and we run. And it prints out number. Okay, just printed out number. So we perhaps we want to print out a specific number. And we can do this since this is printf, it's got the same semantics as printf in C. So we can do like this, percent D, which then will then print out a number in, in in decimal form, but we cannot give an argument here. We need to give the argument to the call. And this is done by giving another argument to this function call. There is a calling convention, as we can see here, that says the integer argument, which is the order. So the first argument to a function is put in RDI, the second argument in RSI. So we saw here that we put the first argument was the pointer to the string. So then the second argument, RSI, is actually the value that we want to print out. So let's say that we want to print out value 65. If we run this, and now we can just do this, we actually print out value 65. Okay, great. Now let's say that we want to print out this value 10 times. Then we want to, we need to create a loop. And loops are created by defining more uh, labels and labels are just addresses in, in memory in the end. So we create now a, a new label here. Let's call it my loop. My loop. Have a loop here and we want to repeat it 10 times. So we initialize another register let's say rcx to 10. And then we want to decrement this register until it reaches zero. And we can do that by just using an instruction that's called dec. We can take a look at it. It's dec here, decrement by one. So it's just subtracting the value we run, rcx. And then there is an instruction that's called jump if not zero, because this decrement is setting a flag and then we can just directly check if the result is not zero. If it's not zero, we could jump to loop, my loop, otherwise it will just fall through and then it will exit. No, it, it actually did number, printed out number 65 and then it seg folded. So something went really wrong. And this is a challenge with when you're programming assembler, when it doesn't work, it actually really does not work. So you have to try out different things. So what happened here? I mean, we tried the loop here, but something went wrong. And it turns out that when we call a function, we cannot really trust that it will not destroy registers. So when we call this function, it comes back and it can actually change the values right, of these registers. So there is a calling convention here uh, saying which registers the call Lee, the ones being called, needs to save. And, and this is this call Lee saved registers. It will guarantee that RBP, RBX, R12, 
13, 14, and 15 will save. But the other ones might not be saved. So we cannot trust that they will not be saved. So let's look at here. We, what, what do we want, need to save between these call here? We are counting with RCX, and that is not saved. So we, we, that might be destroyed. So that might make the loop just loop forever. We need to know that we have this RDI is always pointing to this pointer here. That might be destroyed because what we preserve was our BP and our BX. So that might be destroyed. RX we are clearing every time, so that is fine. So what we can do, for example, here, we, instead of using RCX, we can change where using RBX instead because that we know will be saved. Let's see if that works. No, still, still sick faulting. So we, we probably need to save also this, this one, the RDI, that makes sure that it's always on the right side. So it's always pointing to the right thing. So we, we can instead put it inside the loop. So we are always giving, restating that number. Does that work? Yes, that worked. We solved this by, by having this counter in a register that was not preserved. If this was actually des uh, destroyed, there is another way. We can also use push and pop instructions. So if we look at the code here, we see that there is a push instruction. So it pushes the value, the register on the stack, and pop is popping. So we could save RBX here by pushing and then popping, which will then save. So then we can use a register that is, is not safe. Now RBX was safe, so we don't have to do that right now. So let's, let's remove the push and pop for now. We have now the numbers printed, but we actually do not want to print always value 65. We want to count, count upwards. So let's say that we put this here and then we increment RSI with one after we have called it. So we let's increment RSI here and then run it. So the trick is to run it many times so you can always check the result. Well, in this case, we had 65 and then we get some weird values. So it turns out that this printf is actually destroying RSI. So that's why we are printing the wrong number. So now let's do this push on, on RSI instead. Push RSI and pop RSI. And now we get 65, 66, 7, and so forth. There is something called the ASCII table. So we have each character represents a number. And if we Google ASCII, we can just look at the, for example, the Wikipedia entry here that explains that this is the encoding of characters. So here is a, an old, from the 1972, it showing the table of how it maps. So we can see here, for example, A maps to hexadecimal value 41. And if we go down in this pretty long entry here, we can look at an, a simpler table here, where we see the decimal number and a, the hexadecimal number and what it's printed out. And if we look at 41 here, in hexadecimal form, 41, it's there, and it should be an A, value 65, right? So we, we, we actually, by coincidence, or not really, uh, wrote 65 here. So let's print these characters instead. And then if you know about printf, you can actually use this percent %c. We can write ASCII like this. So we should now print the ASCII character. Let's see if it works. Well, it did not. So why did it not work? Because we haven't supplied the argument yet. We have just two arguments, and that was in RDI and RSI. So let's look at the, the calling convention. It says the first one is an RDI, then we have an RSI. The next one is an RDX. So we need to put it in RDX. So we're, what we have in RSI should also be in RDX, the third, because we have how many arguments do we need? One for the pointer to the string, 
one for the this percent D and one for this percent C. So if we here write move R D X comma R S I, let's see what happens then. Then we print letters here when we're counting up. Let's uh, do 25 instead here. So we print. We can actually print from zero and do the first one and 20. And we can do that. And this is the result. We have the whole ASCII table. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this uh, session and that you have learned something. And uh, please check out the other videos available here. Thank you for, for listening. <laughs>